Okay, so sorry about that. The battery cut off. Um, I just charged it. Hopefully we'll be able to get through the rest of um, the lecture, okay, the rest of the video. So we left off with air going down through the larynx or voice box, okay, and into the trachea. Okay, the trachea splits, right, and goes into the tubes that we call bronchi. Okay, bronchi are these branches that you see here. Okay, after the bronchi have delivered air down to the individual different segments or parts of the lobes and the lungs, then they branch into even smaller tubes that are called bronchioles. Okay, bronchi have cartilage in them that holds the tubes open. The smaller bronchioles, however, don't have any cartilage. Okay, they're the first um, respiratory passageways without cartilage. They have smooth muscle instead, kind of like the blood vessels. Okay, so just like the blood vessels, because of their smooth muscle, they can dilate and constrict. Okay, so they do this, the bronchioles do this, in order to direct airflow through the lungs. Okay, so we have our trachea. The trachea splits and these two bronchi that you see here, okay, going into the right lung and the left lung, are the primary bronchi, also known as main bronchi. Okay, the next set of bronchi, so here, 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 down here, here, okay, those are secondary bronchi or lobar bronchi. Okay, they bring air into each individual lobe of the lung, okay, each individual section of the lung, and we'll see the lobes of the lung in just one second. Okay, so main bronchi, lower bronchi. The last bronchi that you see, they're all colored on this model here, so anything in color on this model, these are the segmental bronchi, okay, or tertiary bronchi. Okay, so we go primary, secondary, tertiary, or main, lower, segmental, okay? After that, we go to the bronchioles, and you can't see the bronchioles on this model again, okay? So I'll show you those when we get to this model of an individual lobule in the lung. So we said that the lungs are divided into lobes, okay? They're divided into sections or areas called lobes, and we can see them when we look at this model here. So this model's showing us the right lung and the left lung, okay? Um, we see that each lung has an apex and a base. Um, again, the apex is the free side that's not connected, okay? So the point tip up here is the apex. The base is the bottom part of the lung here, the part where it's actually connected. And in this case, the lungs are connected to the diaphragm. So you see the diaphragm has this red line here at the bottom of the lungs. If I tilt it this way, you can see the diaphragm is actually a big, flat, kind of dome-shaped muscle. And when we go through respiratory physiology in lecture, you'll see that the diaphragm is very important when we look at how we inhale and exhale, when we bring air into our lungs and push it out of our lungs. We utilize the diaphragm, okay? So anyhow, we have the apex and the base. We have the diaphragm, okay? And then we said that we have lobes, okay, parts, big parts of the lungs, okay? When we look at the right lung, we see that we actually have three lobes. The left lung only has two. And that's because the left lung is actually a little bit smaller. It has less mass because the heart, remember, is bigger on the left side. Okay, the left side of the heart is so much bigger that it takes up some of the space away from the lungs. Okay, so we see this little notch that's taken out of the lung right here. This is called the cardiac notch, okay? This is the heart that kind of encroaches on its territory. So the lobes, okay? The way the lungs are divided into these, these lobes are with these creases or grooves that we call fissures, okay? So the right lung has two important fissures. The oblique fissure comes up the side of the lung just like your oblique abdominal muscles come up the sides. Okay, so the oblique fissure comes up the side here. And then we have this fissure that goes horizontally across the lung. And what do you know? That's the horizontal fissure. Okay, so that divides the right lung into the superior lobe, the middle lobe, and then the inferior lobe down at the bottom here. Okay, 
When we look at the left lobe, okay, remember we have the cardiac notch here, okay? And then we only have two lobes, okay? So that means that we only have one fissure or groove present. In this case, on the left lung, there's just an oblique fissure, okay? Only the oblique fissure. That divides the left lung into the superior lobe and the inferior lobe, okay? divided up into lobes, big sections. Those lobes are further divided into smaller little sections called lobules, okay? And this model here is showing you one single lobule. So we see that we have these tubes coming into the lobule, and these are showing us bronchioles. Remember we said bronchioles are the smaller muscular um, tubes, okay? So these are showing us bronchioles. And we'll see that we actually have a couple different types of bronchioles. Okay, we have a terminal bronchial. Okay, this is a terminal bronchial. This is a terminal bronchial. Coming down here would be a terminal bronchial. Okay, and that brings the air into a lobule. Okay, after that, we have these smaller little ones that branch off. Okay, these are the respiratory bronchioles. After a respiratory bronchial, air is going to flow into the duct, okay? The alveolar duct, which you see here in black. Okay, this alveolar duct is shown this little black dot, okay? So the air flows out through this alveolar duct or this little kind of a hallway, okay? And it flows from there into these big areas here, okay? This, this cluster of alveoli which is called an alveolar sac, okay? So this big grape-like cluster that you see here is an alveolar sac. It contains many, many alveoli, okay? So many alveoli. Each one of these little bubbles, here are little grapes, is showing you an alveolus. So alveolus is singular, alveoli is plural, okay? Each one of these little alveoli, each one of these little bubbles is a chamber, a very thin wall, the chamber where gas exchange occurs, okay? So there, these alveoli are gathered in these clusters called alveolar sacs. A duct, an alveolar duct, brings air into the middle of that alveolar sac, okay? The duct is kind of like a hallway and each of the alveoli is like a room off of the hallway, okay? So we have our terminal bronchioles, our respiratory bronchioles, okay, down, and then our alveolar duct, okay? We have our alveolar sac, and then each individual alveoli, okay? When we look at this model, it actually also shows us a few other kinds of um, structures associated with a lobule. Here in black, these thin lines in black, these are showing us elastic fibers. And that's because the lungs have lots and lots of elastic fibers that surround the alveoli, and those become very important when we look at exhalation, okay? Um, also, all of these little red lines here are showing us capillaries, lung capillaries or pulmonary capillaries. Okay, we've got tons and tons of capillaries surrounding these alveoli which is important because if the oxygen is going to diffuse from the air in the alveoli into the bloodstream, we have to have capillaries present, right? We can't, oxygen can't enter the bloodstream if we don't have capillaries. So we have capillaries surrounding all of these alveoli, okay? So that's it for today's video on the respiratory system. Okay, um, the next video that we'll post will be on the digestive system. Okay, you should see that in a couple days.